After building N64 VR in a previous video, I knew I wanted to do more with the project, but making an entire game from scratch is a lot of work just to test out the capabilities. So I decided to make a Mario 64 ROM hack. The plan is pretty simple. Just render Mario 64 split screen with each half the screen going to each eye. I used the USB project I made to gather the tracking information from the Oculus so you can track the head as you turn it in the game. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail about how I did this. There's a link to a video somewhere on how I did that. But to summarize, there's three sensors, the accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyro. The accelerometer points in the direction of force, so that's typically gravity, so downward. If you wiggle though, it, it's not very accurate, which is what the downside of that sensor. The magnetometer tends to point towards magnetic north, and so between that, those two, there's two vectors, which gives you enough to come up with an orientation of the headset, but because of the shakiness of it, I have to pass it through a low pass filter, which makes it lag really slow behind the actual head orientation, but it's a lot more stable. To bring back the fast movements, I grab the data from the gyro sensor, which just measures rotation at any instant. With the gyro alone is not enough though, because over time it'll drift and it loses track of which direction is north or up. So the combination of sensors allowed them to compensate for each other's weaknesses and you get a much more accurate head tracking. The implementation of head tracking does involve some vector math and if that's something you want to get better at, I recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant. I've always found the best way to learn is to actually do things. You retain things much better that way. That's how Brilliant's designed. It creates engaging lessons that make you do instead of just read. And the lessons are all very visual and interactive, which for game development, it's really important to be able to visualize your problem that you're trying to solve and be able to apply the concepts you've learned to those problems. Brilliant does a great job at that. And if you're interested in game development, I would highly recommend their lessons on vectors and linear algebra. I use those concepts constantly in game development and Brilliant has really nice organized lessons to help you learn those. Brilliant lets you learn at your own pace. Their lessons are broken up into bite-sized pieces you can do just a little bit at a time each day. Brilliant has thousands of lessons at a variety of skill levels. You can learn about math, coding, or even machine learning. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days free and get 20% off an annual subscription, visit brilliant.org slash James Lambert or click the link in the description. I'm really happy to have Brilliant sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So I was able to get split screen rendering pretty quickly. It was just a matter of rerunning the rendering code twice, doing it once on one half the screen and then again on the other. But the downside is this is less than optimal because I have to process the whole scene twice, which is redundant work. And that also generated a really long display list, which a display list is just a list of commands sent from the CPU to the GPU telling it what to draw to the screen. So when it had to redraw the entire screen twice, everything was in the display list twice. Not only is it inefficient, it also was leading to a crash. When I'd start a large level, the display list would overflow and problems. To solve that, I actually just generate the display list once that renders the scene and then reuse that to draw each eye. But the issue with that now is each eye needs to be drawn with a slightly different perspective. And so if I reuse the exact same display list, you would get the exact same perspective. To solve that problem, I use a feature called Segments. Segments is a feature from LiveUltra that lets you change a location in memory referenced by a display list without touching the display list. The way that works is there are 16 segments and each segment can be configured to point to a specific place in memory. And then all of the pointers or memory addresses, however you want to think about it, that get passed into a display list have a segment associated with them. Each of these addresses are 32 bits. Bits 27 through 24 represent the segment. And then the remaining bits are an offset from that segment. In my case, I use segment 15 to represent the projection matrix. So when I generate the display list, I just use this virtual address here. You can see the F in that address in hexadecimal is 15, meaning I'm using segment 15. And then the rest of those are all zeros, meaning offset of zero. What this is saying is when I render the projection matrix, it is telling it to point exactly where segment 15 is pointing. And so I'm able to reuse the same display list, but before I render it for each eye, 
I just update what that segment's pointing to. When I render the first eye, I generate the projection matrix that gives its perspective, and then I run the display list, and then after that, I update the segment to point to the other projection matrix for the other eye and rerun that. And the result is I only have to generate the display list once. It uses less RAM, which if you know anything about N64 optimization, that makes the RAM bus go vroom vroom. I also had to modify the library code or lib ultra to be able to request the information from my custom USB controller. But I was able to grab most of the code from my libdragon implementation for that. So that went pretty smooth. One last change I made on this iteration is I ended up reducing the field of view when rendering the scene because you don't actually see all the pixels when you're wearing the Oculus. And so by reducing the field of view, I reduce the memory requirements, which helps speed the whole thing up. And after this, I have a working Mario VR ROM hack. So let's give it a try. This works far better than is expecting. The castle courtyard actually runs pretty smoothly, although the trees do weird stuff when I tilt my head. When I enter Bobomb Battlefield, you can see the frame rate really struggles. There's just a lot more going on here. And even though I was able to optimize generating the display list, the GPU still has to run through it twice. And it plays pretty well, although things do look very pixelated. If you want to know what it looks like and you have a DK1, you can just watch this video through and you can see what I'm seeing. You might be able to approximate the, the view with other VR headsets like a Google Cardboard, but I make no promises. Either way, the screen could use more pixels. Now, the N64 does support double resolution, or rather four times as many pixels, but I didn't want to take the time to get that figured out for this one ROM hack. I've also increased the game IDP to be much larger than human scale. That's because the low resolution makes it so the depth perception really isn't that great. And moving the eyes further apart can exaggerate the effect, making it more obvious which things are far and which things are close. This also has the effect of making Mario appear very small or maybe I'm a giant. Next, I wanted to try a more challenging level. The bomb battlefield doesn't let me see the difference that depth perception makes when doing tight platforming. And either I just am really bad at this game or the depth perception didn't really help. I fell off many times in TikTok clock. But I was able to get through the level and get a star. Then I thought, well, maybe the wing cap's a lot of fun in VR. It gives you the sensation of flying with a 3D feel and yeah, it actually works okay. Although at this point I was getting very motion sick. The head tracking wasn't very good, frame rate's not very high, and both of those lead to a really bad motion sickness. It doesn't help that Mario 64 is also a game that has a lot of movement, but I wanted to power through the motion sickness and finish up by defeating Bowser. And the fight played out pretty much the same. I don't think the depth perception really helped in gauging the distance to the bomb. I, I mean, the swinging Bowser around and throwing him is kind of difficult to gauge anyway. So I don't think VR really benefited here. Yeah, I know, I only beat the first stage Bowser, but I was getting really motion sick at this point and I just wanted to be done. And that's Mario VR for the N64. I have a ROM patch linked in the description if you want to try it out yourself. You will need an Oculus DK1 for it to look right and you're not going to get head tracking, but you can still give it a shot. Sorry to interrupt. It's time for the Indie Spotlight. My name is Joe. I am James's brother. I edit his videos for him. I'm going to be taking over the Indie Spotlight so James has more time to work on his projects. Today's game is called Bzzt. Bzzt is a short platformer developed by KO.DLL. Sorry, I'm not sure how to say that. You play as a robot called ZX8000, created by a couple of scientists. The core of this game is tight platforming and challenging levels. This game is not easy. Each level will offer you unique challenges in which you will die a lot. I even got an achievement for dying a hundred times. To 100% this game, you'll need to collect all the bolts on each level and complete the level before a designated time, which makes the game even harder. Though this game is hard, it is so satisfying when you're able to complete a level. Controlling your character feels very good and becomes very fun as you master the controls. I never felt out of control and could only blame myself when I died. If you are looking for a short challenging platformer, then Bzzt is the game for you. You can currently get it on Steam, but it will also be released on the Nintendo Switch this summer. If you guys have any suggestions for indie games, leave them in the comments below so we can take a look at them. Now back to James. Although I am in the process of trying to make a simplified version of my USB project, something that would be easier to mass produce. So if you're interested in following that, be sure to subscribe. I know there's a number of ways this project can be improved, which, Kays, if you're watching and are interested, I can send you one of these USB adapters when I get one ready. 
if you wanted to try making something yourself. My email contact is in my YouTube description page if you want to reach out. I'd love to hear from you and to see what your optimized NC4 engine could do in VR. And that is all for this video. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this. Again, 30 days free if you use the link in the description. And until next time, take care.